Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some Pittsburgh Steelers 2023 NFL Draft analysis and breakdown of a busy and really exciting day two for the Pittsburgh Steelers, making three selections on day two. At number 32, taking Penn State cornerback Joey Porter Jr. And there was the conversation about would the team stay at 32 or would they trade down with teams looking to move up for a quarterback, ultimately Pittsburgh stays, and they had offers, that was the report, and then you saw Tennessee one pick later go up to 33 to take Will Levis, and so you can you know say with 99.9% confidence Pittsburgh could have traded down, but they stay and take Porter, who was a viable option uh, at number 17. He falls out of the first round, and to get him a 32 I think is really good value. I think at 17, I would have been fine with the pick. His game didn't necessarily wow me. I thought it was just, you know, steady, you know, solid tape, nothing incredibly impactful. Some of that was just because he was not targeted uh, a lot, seemingly, and obviously lacked some of the big-time splash plays. But physical press man corner can tackle extreme length, 34-inch arm. It's kind of a theme of the entire draft, just kind of the freaky, long-type dudes for their position. Obviously, the connections here with Mike Tomlin and Joey Porter Sr., and so the, the checks all those boxes there, which is a, a cool story, but to the player, you're getting a really physical press man corner, cleaned up his technique in 2022, you know, less comfortable in off man, less comfortable in zone coverage, and so there's going to be an adjustment there, um, and he's still probably a little bit grabby overall, trying to maybe lean on that length a little bit too much, but Pittsburgh needed a corner. You felt like they were not going to go past their second selection of the draft after taking Broderick Jones at 14. Um, without taking a cornerback, and so you get Porter at 32, and you really see the conviction in taking him because Pittsburgh certainly had every opportunity to trade down. With the 49th pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers selected Wisconsin defensive lineman Keanu Benton, and D.C. Terrell Austin said he'll be a nose tackle to start his NFL career, and they'll go from there. If you followed my channel for the last couple of months, the la- the first uh, 2023 NFL draft video I did was on Keanu Benton entitled why Keanu Benton is a perfect fit for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And that remains true the whole way through this process. It is so hard to find in this day and age defense alignment that are the prototypical kind of conventional old school defense alignment that Pittsburgh gravitates towards the guys that are six, four, six, five, 300 plus pounds with 33 plus inch arms you just don't find those guys too much because the college game with running quarterbacks and guys getting smaller you got you know smaller shiftier more athletic uh you know one gap type of guys the Aaron Donalds of the world the Kalijah Kansies of the world and so to get a body type like Ben just just that alone before you can even consider the tape is hard to find and then you put on the tape you know stack and shed quick hands some pass rush juice um, is a guy that, you know, I think overall, you know, plays to run well, uh, you know, in that great Wisconsin system that Pittsburgh's, you know, drafted from many times over the last several seasons. He's got a wrestling background. All that's really impressive. A guy that I think has the the size and length and experience to play, you know, three tech, some four eye, play out on the edge. Um, now his foot speed's not great. it has got to be more consistent in the run game, stay on his feet. Thought he was on the ground a bit too much. Um, has to still develop as a pass rusher. We're never going to be a, you know, Kim Hayward, double-digit sack kind of guy. He's not that level of ath- uh, athleticism. But a guy that can, I think, give you pass rush juice at a base for sure against centers and somebody that can probably rotate in sub-packages as well, not just your typical two-down, run-down type plugger. He's not going to be that kind of guy. My NFL comp to Benton was Dalvin Tomlinson, and that's a guy that gets about, you know, two to three and a half sacks per season. I could see that basically being the range for Benton, maybe in that three to four a sack kind of range. And so really good pick there. Uh, good senior bowl week. Again, just checks all those boxes, pre-draft visit. Um, again, just trying to find that body type is really hard to find. And they found it with Keanu Benton. Steelers had pick 80. They traded down with the Carolina Panthers, getting pick 93 and a fourth rounder. I believe that is 123. I'm not looking at it uh, right now, to be honest with you guys, but kind of had to trade that pick. From 80 because if you didn't you made a pick there you don't pick again until 241 and trying to bridge that gap kind of becomes difficult you'd have to trade a future pick and that's never really an ideal thing to do and so I think it was pretty obvious at some point Pittsburgh was going to go down they like Porter so much at 32 they like Benton so much at 49 
They didn't want to go down, so you kind of had to go down at pick 80. But at 93, you get a pretty good player in Darnell Washington, the tight end from Georgia. And if you're wondering why he lasted so long, a guy that was you know, thought to be a potential late first-round pick, apparently there's some medical concerns, uh, according to Albert Breer, Ian Rappaport, some issues over the knee uh, at the Combine. And so I think some teams had him off the board for that. Now, Washington says he's healthy. He's good. He's only had one surgery on his knee. He's had some injuries over his career. There was a foot uh, surgery in 2021. He missed spring ball in March of 2022 with what was called a lower body injury. I'm going to assume that was the knee. And he is kind of that awkward, tall type. And, you know, for guys that want to tackle him, you got to go low. You can't go high on Tarno Washington, who's almost 6'7" you know, 260, you don't go high and try to wrap up. So, you know, guys go at his knees and maybe that's kind of the concern there. Even if his medical was squeaky clean, maybe that was kind of a thought, you know, you worry about, you know, somebody, you know, blowing out your knee because they're, they're going low to tackle you. But overall, um, it's worth the risk. A to trade down, still get this guy. I said, you know, pre-draft, he's a one-on-one type player, even in a very deep and excellent tight end class, there was nobody quite like Darno Washington, his length, his run blocking. You watch the combine. Go back and if you see the clips, go watch the combine of him on the blocking sled. And usually these tight ends, because they're big athletes, they're you know just big tight ends, F move tight ends. They're on the blocking sled and they they don't do anything. They're too high. They pop up. They there's no pop on contact. And you watch Washington just move it effortlessly, and that that translates to his tape. Now he's a freaky guy in terms of how he tested four six four forty, like really good numbers overall. He's made some of those plays on tape. I don't think he's quite as freaky consistently as the testing may suggest. There's a bit of an awkwardness to him, a bit more of a lumbering kind of straight line, but he's not as that gentry. This is a guy that's obviously, you know, can, can make plays post-catch and can run a couple of routes. And again, the size is is really intriguing. So to run 12 personnel to play some bully ball, that's been the theme of the entire offseason. Get big, get physical, improve the trenches bring in some Georgia kids to do that. Broderick Jones at 14, Darnell Washington at 93, and yet Benton at 49 for the other side of the ball. Um, and you get Porter out there at corner. He's got really uh, rare length. And you talk about the length for these guys, Broderick Jones at almost 35 inches, Benton at over 33. I think it's like 33 and three eighths. Porter at 34. And then Washington What's his arm length? It's it's something ridiculous. I forget the exact number, but you know it's it's pretty special. So that's just one minor kind of theme of the draft. But you get some really good physical guys with some great tools and traits. And and tight ends coach Alfredo Roberts is a really good coach. He's developed Pat Frymuth, basically helped save Zach Gentry's career a couple of years ago, and has worked well with Connor Hayward for him to make an impact last year as a rookie. So I think Roberts has done a, a really good job. He works those guys extremely hard in practice in camp. They're always doing something first to the field. And so he's going to you know, have a great lump of clay to work with in Darnell Washington. So overall, really happy with the day two picks. Um, it, things aren't perfect. You know, Benton's never going to be a super high upside pass rusher, and there's some consistency and probably some technical things to work on. You know, Porter can be grabby and he can be a bit over aggressive and not always process as well as you'd like and, you know, struggles more and off. You can't press man 100% of the time. Pittsburgh still plays zone about 55 or so percent of the time. Um, you know, and then with, with Washington, there's still concerns over, over medical and exactly, you know, athleticism. How consistent do you kind of get that freaky type stuff and how many routes can you run? But, Really interesting guy, and I think you have to be really happy with the picks so far. I, I try not to be super homerish with the picks. I do typically look at them through a more optimistic lens, um, but I think it's hard to find a lot of fault here in the guys they're taking, and if they can kind of be coached a bit, you're going to have a really strong class. So then you trade down with Carolina, pick up a fourth tomorrow, have two sevens. Maybe they trade down again and, and try to get a fifth and a six. I, I don't I don't quite know, but we'll see what day three as in store. So sorry for the late video. I know it's after midnight, probably well after midnight by the time this actually gets posted. Uh, maybe you're listening to this on Saturday morning. Well, you are because it is Saturday morning, but like when the sun is up, i um, just been so busy with the site. And thank you guys who have come to the site and commented and visited and uh, supported us. It was a fantastic day for Steelers Depot and I think a really fantastic day for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Appreciate you guys listening. 
please like this video and subscribe. I'll do some film rooms and tape breakdowns um, next week or, or you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, some something like that. Probably a bit later in the week after all these picks come in. So we'll have the day three day three recap uh, tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.